Iranian women fight religious crackdown by publicly removing hijab. So everyone, this is one of the most important stories we've covered like in a while. Um, on July 6th, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi ordered government agencies to enforce the country's mandatory hijab laws more strictly, signaling the nation's move towards a religious crackdown. Ismail Ra uh, Rahmani, a deputy prosecutor in the city of Mashhad, ordered a ban on women not wearing proper hijab from public transport. In Shiraz, southern Iran, quote-unquote morality police have been patrolling with a van that serves as a mobile detention facilities for women caught wear not wearing the hijab in public. Iran also declared July 12th as, quote-unquote, hijab and chastity day to promote the Islamic notion of hijab for women. But the pushbacks are strong, both among uh, citizens and activists. In response to the increasingly harsher implementation of hijab compliance, many women have posted videos of themselves not wearing the hijab. Women's rights activists have called the hijab enforcement, quote, a violation of their human rights and organized a hashtag no to hijab campaign. Masi Alinejad, a Iranian-American journalist and activist, tweeted numerous videos of women not wearing hijab in public as part of the ongoing movement. More than 100 activists, including prominent journalists and actresses, signed a joint statement declaring the, quote, damage done to society by 43 years of enforced veiling in Iran. Okay, do you want to watch some of the videos? Or like yeah, answer? you can translate them for us. Okay, okay. But they, by the way, I don't know if you guys want explanations because this I could talk about this for hours because this is no, not I, that's what we're here for. That's oh, what right. I want from you. <laughs> okay. Well, let me know if you have audio for this. Do you yes. have audio? Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, wait. Hold on, I'm hearing echo here. Just one second. Do you guys hear echo? No. There we go. Okay. Wait, I think the audio went away. Okay, so describe what we're watching to for people. So we are watching a woman standing in the middle of a street. Well, not like the the street but like on a sidewalk you can see the cars pass in the background so in public and she is holding a black veil in her hands and a scarf or hijab and then she's holding a match to it and lighting it on fire and she's also wearing like a mask and sunglasses to kind of conceal her face all right let's watch this one this one has a lot more this is uh, posted by masia linajad and i think this one has a lot more here wait we have no okay, audio so, yep there we go. So these are people who are saying, Messi, here's our videos. Like they're just telling Messi that here's us walking in Tehran, walking in different cities of Iran uh, without their, or this one is an Esfahan, uh, just like removing their hijab and recording themselves uh, without the hijab. By the way, this is like uh, the, the reason why a lot of, okay, I could talk, I'll give you my analysis later because this has become, this is stuff uh, are es escalating to a whole other level in Iran recently. Okay, but hold on. So they just, every each one of these women are just telling you where they, where, what city they're in, and they're giving the date and the city. It's important for them to mention the location and the date uh, just so, so that um it's very they, you know these women are are very organized okay right now like they have they have a system okay because they want uh they want it to be recorded that this is widespread and they also want to document like as soon as you see they're recording yourself each one of them is mentioning the the city and the date so that people can see the progress um wh where is it spreading and how fast is it spreading so you know, they're very clever about that. This one is saying, like, I, I took this video for you. I just want to see who dares come and, and bothers me about me not, not having it. Yes! She's like, I just, she's just like, I just want to see who could, who dares come and tells me and tell me anything about not having a job. <laughs> Okay, 
So these are just different women in different places, just taking off their hijab. Okay, so this is this is a man over here, standing right over here. He's like bothering this woman for not wearing a hijab. And she's like, why are you harassing me? Why are you insulting people? And like, he's like, I'm not insulting you. And then he's like, why would you interfere in our freedom uh, of choice? And the man is like, just a moment, just a moment. Okay, so here's another man telling the woman who has, doesn't have the hijab, he's, uh, she's recording him. So there's two things they record. First of all, they record themselves without the hijab. And when they get a reaction by somebody, they record the reaction that they're getting, okay? So this man is telling the woman without the hijab, that this is this this land this there's a there's a law of the land okay this country has a law okay you have to just apply the law okay so for people who don't know there a lot of the um a lot of they used to be the arguments used to be like more islamic okay but now because of the more people are like you know screw islam uh, and I'm not Muslim, right? Like I don't want to, or some people say, I don't want to abide by Islamic laws. So now a lot of the arguments are shifting. Like, even if you don't agree, it's important. It's moral to follow the law of the land. Okay. So this country has its laws and you just have to respect the laws. Okay. If you don't like the laws, it's okay. You can just leave Iran and go live in another country. But this, these are the laws that you have to obey. Okay. So that, these are the more recently, this is, these are more of the narratives. Like, Hey, you, this is not, this is not Kuwait, okay? This is Iran, okay? Just, just, just follow the laws. Uh, but the response, let's see what the response is. So the man is saying, this country has laws. <laughs> so the woman is responding, slavery was also one day a law, the law. <laughs> so, she, so the response is not just, just because something is the law, that doesn't mean it's good. Obeying the law is not necessarily a good thing. So that's the challenge a lot of the women. And I, I've noticed like this, slavery is like the, the, I've seen in many videos that these women record when the other guy always says like, hey, this is the law, obey the law. They have, they're equipped with counter arguments. They have this, they're ready to go on the spot. Okay, so it's very beautiful to see. Yeah? And, they say, and she's saying, uh, why should I respect a bad law? I'm like, oh, one should not respect a bad law. Okay, so now we're watching a woman being arrested for like being put in the cop car for not wearing the job. Okay, and so the woman in the background is saying a, a law that dehumanizes people uh, is not a good law. Like, and we're watching videos of Le Mullah, and Mullah is getting off his out of his car and just like uh, buttering this woman. Ooh, the, the the mullah is coming to the car of this woman and telling the woman like put the hijab back on you filth like he's oh it, like you've put the, you put the put back your hijab you filth that's what he just said and the woman is saying like it's none of your business and like go to, the mullah is saying go to hell oh. Oof. Oh this God. man is like, yeah, this man. So that was another mullah trying to get the phone away from the woman. And now this is, this is a religious man. This man is trying to not to touch the woman. So he, he's taking off his coat and he's trying to hit the woman with his coat. <laughs> and he's saying like, put back your hijab, fix your hijab. Like he's like, fix your hijab. And he's hitting her with his coat. He's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy's famous. <laughs> yeah, so this man, this mullah is telling the woman like, fix your hijab, we get murders! <laughs> like, okay, so I have to put this in context. Like, fix your hijab, we get murders! Okay, so the line, we gave murders, the, it's equivalent to a mom telling you, I gave birth to you, okay? In no, no, life. I think a better equivalent is like, there are soldiers that died for you. Yes. Like we, yeah, we we have veterans that died for your rights in this country, and this is yes. how you're acting. Yeah, like yes. we have people that martyred themselves, like in the Iran Iraq War, like yes. for for this nation, and this is how you act, like that kind of thing. Yeah, but the line we gave martyrs is a common line in Iran. Whenever whenever people are not res respecting the regime or respecting oh the laws or being un-Islamic, 
you have somebody like we get martyrs we get martyrs think of the martyrs like we like we sacrifice so much to uphold this islamic republic and what are you doing look at you what are you doing in fact my mom was arrested for her uh, hijab at some point and that's the exact same line that they got right oh actually this is a this is an interesting story my mom like but when my mom and my aunt were arrested they were arrested together okay back then the standards were a lot like the were even stricter okay so my mom was not arrested for showing her hair my mom were, was arrested for her hijab being red oh my god okay colorful right now people get to have colorful hijab but back then that was like too colorful okay so when and she had to go to mandatory purifying uh, classes okay so morality islamic morality classes that was her sentence okay and the teacher in that class told her like you guys like you are thinking about the martyrs that this country has given our young and all the young men who have sacrificed so, so much for this country you're corrupting their hearts with with your appearances <gasps> like you are making them go to the sinful path by tempting them what you know these are pure men and this country has so much valuable pure men and you're <sighs> corrupting their hearts by being so you know by looking like this okay because you're yeah and, you're a whore like <laughs> yes no but my mom responded like no 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 you don't understand my hijab was red for remembering the blood that was sacrificed the blood of the martyrs that was what my red hijab represents <laughs> she's quick smart and quick on her feet i like it that was what yeah anyways let's continue there's so many things I want to talk to you about this story, but I want, okay, well, I you have want a to finish few questions. This or... Oh, we should oh, finish okay. the video. Do you want it? I don't know. Do you want to finish it? Because there's, I think let's, okay. let's get into like dissecting the topic. At hand. Okay. 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 So okay, one thing I want to talk about is in your opinion and what you've been seeing since the 12th was how successful was this campaign? Because mm. I was talking to Babak on the 12th. And for those who don't know, he's like the other co-host of the Atheist Republic Persian channel. And um, he was basically saying like, eh, like we've seen like some videos today, but it wasn't as much as we thought. He was like, where are the people like coming out? Like, but it was the day of, so we weren't sure how much was going to have come from it. Right. But what, what do you think was the success? I think they over, I, I agree with Bob. I, I think they over promised, like they make it seem like, okay, so if the measure if the if the success is like did they manage to get people talking about it yes okay but they shouldn't be overselling it before okay they should be underselling it and then when it happens people are like okay mission accomplished but what they the mistake that they make is before it they make it seem like a thousands a wave of people like it's going to be the streets are going to be flooded with non-hijabi woman okay and that never happens what happens is that we get like maybe hundreds of videos okay and every time you see a video it's like one woman in a corner recording herself without a hijab and sending it like maybe to either posting it herself or sending it to masiel in hijab or sending it somewhere else okay but if you listen to the narrative before it happens it seems like the expectation is like you're going to open the door and it's just going to be like waves of women with that yeah hijab. all of a sudden no one only you only see yeah. like chadoras but mostly women wearing like their hair free yeah kind of like what actually did happen early in the history of islamic republic when like hundred thousand women actually did show up to protest against like the mandatory hijab like you you know what that event that was crazy mm -hmm. that was something that we never like we weren't told like we had to i had to learn about this many many years later because it was wiped away from the history wow. right yeah we had no idea like what the hell like we were shocked like any time <gasps> and also when we were sharing that story with people like wait a minute what that actually happened like yeah it was completely forgotten it was completely wiped away from iranian history that event okay like we were like this kind of how could this how could like it was so like when you when people eventually because of social media learned about that story it was like such a earth-shattering like discovery like it was almost as if like the fact that that was even possible 
anyways, mm-hmm. but I don't know if people don't know what I'm talking about, like when the Islamic Republic of Iran, when they eventually the regime, when initially the regime came to power, the mere suggestion of mandatory hijab made like women come into the street in masses. You should go watch those videos. Like I could not believe that. Like after more than 30 years, uh, more than like, you know, around 30 years of being an Iranian, that seeing that on a, not even on an Iranian side, like I was discovered, like that was, I would discover that through like, you know, English sites and media, right? That that's mm-hmm. something that happened in Iran. I was like, how, that's amazing. You know what I mean? And it's interesting because you can see there was a wave of women in the streets against the Islamic Republic at the time. And there were like very little men, like almost no men. Okay. And mm-hmm. a lot of people say in Iran that like, the main per- people who stood, who kept on challenging the Islamic Republic of Iran were women, okay? And they were the first to come out and stand against them, okay? And some people are suggesting that pot- it's, given the way things are going, it seems like they are also going to be the la- the people who will eventually maybe be a downfall. I'm not saying this. This is about some people suggesting. Like, they are the ones who started it, and eventually they are the people who will end it as well, right? Like, from the beginning to the end of the Islamic Republic of Iran, uh, the, the main challenge to the regime has been women. But we'll see. I, I don't I'm not making any predictions, okay? Mm-hmm. But what do you think? Well... I thought this was really interesting. I thought it was really important because I think it got the message of compulsory hijab out to more people outside of Iran. Like a lot of people don't even know that this is something that is mandatory within the country. And so I think having such a large campaign reach a bigger international audience was really, really important. Um, But what I think was really important to think about is what this signals because it's not just about like the the religious crackdowns are not just about compulsory hijab like Mm. it is not just about religious it's not just about like women's rights it's not just about teenagers skating around mixing genders like what this is about is a a larger in the state practicing its ability to exert power within the private individual's life. And it's, it's the system flexing its muscle that it can continue to do so that it still has the state infrastructure to do so. And so what do you think about that larger dynamic, especially in consideration of over the past three years, we've been seeing protests in Iran with greater frequency larger numbers for for instance upon instance whether it's water protests oil worker protests uh, building collapses like it just food shortages like it just keeps going and going and going so how what do you think about this large crackdown that is being exerted through like religious means and justification in the midst of the numerous like crises that the country has faced over the past few years. Okay, so I could talk, um, I'm gonna take some notes because I might forget all of this because I could talk about this for a, lo- for a while, okay? So first of all, you have to understand that ever since the elections, okay, uh, the presidential elections in Iran, the hardliners um, have ba- managed to annihilate almost the, uh, the reformers, okay? So the hardliners, have been able to have a full-on takeover of every element of Iranian um, politics, okay? Iranian uh, institutions, not just institutions, like whether they are within politics or not, okay? So they're just like mass takeover, okay? And so that's one thing. The second uh, thing that has happened is that the opposition, uh, okay, so the Iranian regime, is looking weak okay partly mm-hmm. because of the sanctions and partly because of um israel's um just like ease of attack on iranian soil and just taking off of this different interest and also this um the jcpoa not looking like it's going anywhere 
some people are like looking forward, some opposition to the regime are looking forward to maybe harsher um, attempts of, you know, again, harsher attacks on the regime. Well, and, I think the thing that makes them work, look the weakest is the cost of living crisis. Yeah, yeah, economic crisis. There's multiple crises, okay? Um, their failure of some of their plans around the, uh, the region. So some people are saying like, okay, this is this is going to fall apart at some point, okay? I'm not saying if it, it, it will, but that's what some people's impressions are, okay? And people are like, okay, we're getting to that point that's uh, closer. We're getting closer and closer to that point. Again, not my claim, okay? Um, so given that, the regime would want to show that it has teeth, okay? It, mm -hmm. Like maybe it can't do much, like it cannot take, um, do much against the United States or Israel. Like they try to show some power, and they failed, so they go after women, <laughs> after after non-armed uh, women in the streets to show, like, look, we still have teeth, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's three, like, they just a, rem a reminder to the people to know your place. Like, this is, we're, we be scary, okay? This is a we be scary message kind of thing, okay? So the three points I want to mention is, uh, okay, so maybe three or point, four points is that the hijab in iran is not just the hijab it's the it's a brand it's the signature of the islamic republic of iran right it's the way to show that we it's basically the islamic republic of iran is saying we are here okay hmm. we, we we have influence here okay um and the hijab has become a foundational um, symbol of the islamic republic like it's not like it, if you don't have the hij like if you don't have the stamp in the streets it kind of looks like the regime is falling okay you, you, like you can, if you if the regime can't it's not in a position to come and say like okay let's make, make hijab non-mandatory okay because that's a huge signal to everybody is like that we have failed that we are not able to control everybody the way that we used to, okay? Unveiled it's women basically... is like a sign of anti-nationalism. No, like it's an invitation to the opposition to like, mm. look, it, it, we didn't voluntarily like make hijab non-compulsory, like non right? You, you, you managed to force this upon us, okay? So given that we're that weak, you're, it's an invitation to come at us, right? Um, so, and also the hijab, the enforcement of hijab is a perfect excuse for the government to have eyes and ears everywhere, right? It's the best tool for a fashion, because morality police, and, you know, get their shut and stuff, like for, the, the way that they have to enforce this is that they have to enforce this in stores, in the banks, in restaurants, and this becomes and with the excuse of upholding morality, you know, proper uh, attire for uh, women and even men, they they are they're building a surveillance structure mm -hmm. that makes them have eyes and ears everywhere, and to have also influence everywhere. Like if you are in an office, and if the government. You know, like what other excuse do you have for the government to come into your office and watch what's happening in your office or in your restaurant, right? Like if mm. it's not the hijab, then like what the hell are you doing here? Get the hell out of here. Like like I, there's nothing else for you to check. So in order to be able to surveil everything, this is a, like because women are everywhere, this is a perfect way for the government to try to like just be involved everywhere, right? And let me Such see. Such a my, good point. Yeah. Um, the, what I wrote here says our legitimacy. Oh, the, another point is that if if you could if you ad, at some point admit that the woman don't want the hijab, the, the people don't want hijab, you kind of ad, admitting that the people don't want Islamic law. Mm -hmm. And if you admit people don't want Islamic law, the whole point of the Islamic Republic. Uh, is no, you know what I mean? Like it goes away because the point of the legitimacy of wh why Iran needs an Islamic Republic is because the Iranian people want Islamic law. They want an Islamic country, 
right? So if you at some point show that that's, that's not the case, then like, why do we even have an Islamic Republic if the people are not wanting an Islamic, don't want an Islamic country, right? So what I wrote is like, our legitimacy comes from people who want Islamic law, and we are the people who bring the Islamic law. If it is shown mm. that people don't want Islam, what is the point of the Islamic Republic? If people are not Islamic, why should the Islamic Republic be in power, right? So mm -hmm. that's another reason why they. So these are the different point the ways I look at. You could look at that. However, there is an opposition to this. Like there are people who are against the regime and think that this focus on hijab is like not uh, good. Like there are some people who say like people are starving in Iran. People are yeah. suffering from poverty. Why are we focusing on hijab? And then I have the counter arguments to those as well but i think that will take a long time for me too <laughs> oh i do want to hear that at some point do you think you could do on secular jihadists like a deep dive into this event and like its successes in what it but also failures that'd be super interesting to me yeah yeah i think i, I might i want to do a short video edited video on this nice 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 yeah <laughs> Ghost Bunny is saying, I love hearing about women effing the patriarchy. Um, there's one quote I wanted to read from an article in Iran Wire about um, this wave, huge wave of religious crackdowns going on. It's saying, by stepping up the patrols, she said, the government wants to send a message to the people that they're on top of things. A government unable to manage even the country's most minor problems wants to maintain an appearance of power and pretend it's still powerful enough to put down opposition this has become an inherent trait to the point that if morality patrols and compulsory hijab went away the islamic republic would cease to exist as well and i think that goes to what you were saying and that speaks to this is so much about so much more than islam this is about targeting the heart of the islamic republic itself its very legitimacy and so the people, I don't know, I just hope that they get a lot of momentum from this campaign and that they garner a lot of support because it's about so much more than what you put on your head. It's about the benefits, the, it's about the government's ability to exert gender apartheid upon the population. Um, and this is why we all say hijab be hijab, okay? <laughs> yeah, the, actually... Yeah. It's very interesting because a lot of religious people in Iran are becoming more and more against compulsory hijab mm -hmm. because they say like you have made people not just by making hijab compulsory, you have made people, many people, not just against compulsory hijab, you have made them against hijab. Okay. And the polling shows that. I believe it's the majority of Iranians are against yeah. hijab, period. Like the campaigns used to be like no to compulsory hijab. That's what the campaigns used to be. Okay. Now the campaigns are screw hijab, like F the hijab. Like I hate the hijab. If like the campaigns used to be like, don't first Islam upon us. Now the campaigns are like, I shit on Islam. Like <laughs> literally. Like that's what <laughs> like so a lot of religious people are like, what are we doing? We're making people hate Islam. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. But, but guys, that is like the campaigns now, okay? Like campaigns used to be like people, um, that's, that, 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 those are the new hashtags, okay? So people are becoming more and more radical and ag aggressive, okay? And a lot of religious people are like, for the sake of, you know, not, you know, for the sake of Islam, can we not force this upon people? <laughs> some people, some, Islam, some religious people. Say, for the love of Islam, we've got to cut this out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. um, yeah. I'm really excited to see where this movement goes. Forever Stormy is asking, are the high officials in Iran actual fanatics or is it a way for them to stay in power while they and their kids drink wine? What do you say? Well, the high, well I say the high officials are multiple. Like, Okay. It, one problem is that the high officials are a lot of people. <laughs> I guess. I don't know exactly who you're referring to. But given that there's so many people, I would say both. Okay. Like the, the um, I, I'm sure there's like a whole, like a spectrum of these uh, people that, uh, and there's a lot of people on either end and a lot of people in the middle. Right. 
Um, so it really depends. And I don't think like we should guess. I mean, I mean, I don't, we can't guess. I don't think we should pretend to know because it's not really hard, easy to figure out what people's uh, minds are like. Okay, But uh, some of them have shown to um, prove that they, like almost prove that they genuinely believe in this stuff. And some of them have also been indicated be, uh, have done behavior to show like they don't actually have almost zero Islamic views and this is all it's just a power play so I think we have you have both of them like I don't think like I don't think you can make a general uh, comment about all of them yeah hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali you know like me then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.